How do you go see bears? While there can always be bears in easy view near McNeil Camp, most bear viewing involves hiking in six to eight hours or more away from camp and in the field. Every morning, typically around nine o'clock, the staff meets with visitors in the cook shack to discuss plans for the day, review important information like food and gear for the day, and to set a time for the group to depart the camp, typically around 1030. Weather can be good or not so good. But the staff guides will go in just about any weather conditions. Though it is always up to you, the visitor, if you want to go. Staying in camp for the day is always an option, and not a bad one at that. Where the group will go on any given day depends largely on where the bears are most likely to be. And that largely depends on where their food will be. While the hiking itself will provide opportunities to see bears along the way, there are several general destinations in the sanctuary where bears are more concentrated during different parts of the season. They are the sedge flats between Camp and Mikvik Creek as well as in the lower Mikvik Creek tidal flats. Lower Mikvik Creek and the Riffles, the shallow stretch of the creek. Lower Mikvik Falls. Upper Mikvik Falls. McNeil Falls. And Enders Island. Keep in mind, these are general destinations and are often modified in the field depending on weather, tides, bear activity, and the decisions of the group and guide. As a general guideline, the approximate one-way distances from camp to the riffles is 1.1 miles. Camp to Lower Mikvik Falls is 1.4 miles. Camp to Upper Mikvik Falls is 1.5 miles. The route to Upper Mikvik Falls includes both the Riffles and Lower Mikvik Falls. Camp to McNeil Falls is approximately 2.7 miles, and Camp to Enders Island is approximately 2.1 miles. The route to McNeil Falls and Enders Island can be shortened by a half mile or more when it is possible at low tide to take a shortcut across McNeil Lagoon. Keep in mind, these are one-way distances, and when in the field, the group may decide to combine several destinations. Conditions along these trails varies from flat to steep, from dry to very wet, and from firm to very boggy. There are also usually several stream or lagoon crossings. For these reasons, Visitors must have either hip boots or waders of some kind. And with long hours in the field and a fair amount of hiking, those hip boots or chest waders should fit well. To preserve habitat and improve hiking, staff and volunteers have done a lot of work to improve parts of the trail with GeoBlock, a plastic grate material that provides a solid base. But these sections are as yet a small portion of the overall trail system, and hip boots or waders are still required. In the early part of the McNeil season, before red salmon have arrived in Mikvik Creek, the bears will most likely be grazing on sedge in the tidal areas of lower Mikvik Creek.
When the first red salmon arrive in Mikvik Creek, the bears will often be in the lower creek at first. Then, as the salmon move upstream, the bears will follow through the riffles and ultimately all the way up to lower and upper Mikvik Falls. During this Mikvik season, the group roams on established trails around the Mikvik Creek drainage depending on where the bears might be found. This can involve a considerable hike through boggy areas with several stream crossings. The hike to lower and upper Mikvik Falls involves some hills and a short but steep climb after the last crossing of Mikvik Creek. As the season progresses, in late June and early July, the McNeil River Chum Salmon Run begins. This is when the largest concentration of bears can be viewed at McNeil Falls. When the bears are at the falls, the group spends the day on a two-level gravel pad near the falls. Please note that chairs are provided on the pads. The hike to the falls typically involves a crossing of McVick Creek near its mouth. A short climb up a conglomerate rock slope and a hike across the tundra to the falls. As the McNeil season progresses and the Chum Salmon Run slows down, bears are more often viewed in the area of the lower McNeil River, from a gravel area known as Ender's Island, as well as in the lagoon. This hike also involves crossing Lower McVick Creek or the lagoon itself at low tide. Around the base of a conglomerate rock cliff at the edge of the lagoon, and some water crossing to Ender's Island. Viewing of bears in this area is largely at eye level. Viewing in any of the areas in this sanctuary is typically an all-day affair. Visitors should be prepared with appropriate clothing and a good supply of water one or two liters, and a good supply of high-energy food. Hiking is at an easy pace, and the group takes food and water breaks throughout the day. These breaks are also generally good opportunities to view bears. Weather is highly variable and can change dramatically over the course of the day. Sunscreen and bug dope are always a good idea. When a toilet break is needed, you should check with your guide first for an appropriate and safe spot. Make sure to have a Ziploc bag for any used toilet paper as it must be packed back to camp for disposal. The guide and the group will discuss when to call it a day and return to camp. But bears will often further delay that return and the light in the evening can be hard to pass up. Don't forget, when you do arrive back in camp, you will still need to prepare dinner and clean up afterward. If it was cold or wet, the wood stove will be appreciated. And there might still be time for the sauna. So that's how you go see bears. <laughs>